How toxic has the ABC been in this election? It's a menace to our democracy. And tonight I'm going to call out just some of the falsehoods in the past week. Now, the ABC is taxpayer-funded, a billion dollars a year. That means it must, by law, because of that taxpayer funding, be impartial. And even the new ABC boss, David Anderson, admitted that this week at the same time that he claimed bizarrely that the ABC wasn't, in fact, hijacked by the left. Well, I'd say I don't see any evidence to say that we're biased. Uh, I think that, you know, we're, we're compelled to be uh, impartial and accurate at all times. Impartial and, in, and, 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 and accurate. Is that ABC boss stone deaf? This week, ABC presenters have gone feral promoting the great global warming scare and saying things that do not fit the facts, not according to the science that I've seen and which is easily checked by them if they actually bothered, these ABC presenters, like ABC Sydney radio host Wendy Harmer, are echoing the campaign pitch of Labor, and particularly the Greens, who on Monday also got this big endorsement from Lee Sales, host of 7.30, the ABC's flagship current affairs show. But to be fair, if you look at Bill Shorten's policies or Richard Di Natale's policies, whether you, you agree with them or not, they are at least, for example, based in science. Oh, really? Well, I've got to be honest. The ABC is, in fact, absolutely no judge of what that science is, not when it comes to global warming. Last night, for instance... That ignorance of the science influenced the final leaders' debate of the election on the ABC when host Sabra Lane, ABC, asked this misleading question. There are many signs that things are changing in our planet. Warmer temperatures, more intense cyclones. Wait, 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 wait. More intense cyclones? In fact, check the Bureau of Meteorology website. We're getting fewer cyclones and no increase of more intense ones, as you see, red on the graph. In the United States, the most recent study in the Bulletin of the American Meteorological Society, it says the frequency of landfalling hurricanes there, or, or the intensity, show no significant trend since 1900. Now, I know there have been predictions that hurricanes will get more intense, but there is little evidence that that's happening now, as the IPCC has admitted. But the ABC's ignorance of the science got unbelievably worse today. This morning, ABC News Channel host Joe O'Brien, nice guy, but he claimed in an interview with a former president of Kiribati that global warming was drowning those Pacific islands there. How do you feel as a resident of a country that is disappearing? Do you expect that in 30 years' time that that whole population will be living on some other place? Are you, are you hoping to, to relocate the nation to a part of one other particular country? Disappearing? Yesterday, ABC... News radio host Fran Kelly, a global warming extremist, made that same false claim about Kiribati, and not for the first time either. Kiribati sits, just for everyone listening to understand, sits two metres above sea level. It's highly vulnerable to rising sea waters. Scientists have predicted it will be uninhabitable by 2050. That's, you know, just over 30 years away. Exactly not the case. Kiribati is not drowning. If anything, it is growing. A study by the University of La Rochelle of 30 Pacific and Indian Ocean atolls, including 709 islands, reveals that there are no atoll lost land area. In fact, one, South Tarawa, which just happens to be the most populated atoll of Kiribati, increased in size. Increased. Now, that ABC scare about Kiribati drowning or Tuvalu drowning, fake news, false. I could cite other studies, particularly ones from the University of Auckland. And if the ABC actually spent five minutes checking the facts, they would know it. 
But the Greens and the ABC, they like to talk about how they follow the science. Well, I doubt it. What they really follow is a religion, a primitive earth-worshipping religion where nature is holy and only man is evil. True. Here is part of a film this week from the BBC, which is Britain's ABC, imagining how beautiful the world would be without humans, animals, would live in peace, the lion would lie down with the lamb. What would a world without humans be like? Rivers become cleaner. Animals and plants flourish. Is this a new Eden? Perhaps. An Eden? Well, at least in the old Eden, the Christian one, that had room for Adam and Eve. For the new Greens one, no humans. For the Liberals, the ABC now, it's a huge problem. How can the Liberals win elections when they've got a huge government-funded broadcaster relentlessly pumping out global warming propaganda with little seeming regard for the facts? Or when presenters like ABC Melbourne's John Fain conducts interviews so biased against the Liberals that even an ABC audience complains as Fain admitted this morning after his astonishingly rude interview of Treasurer Josh Frydenberg. To those of you who have sent text messages saying that I am demonstrating bias or this interview brought to you by GetUp or the sooner you leave the ABC, the better, you lack respect, I'm astonished that he's putting up with your outrageous grilling of him, uh, that's pretty much, I'm afraid, uh, not going to change anything. That's how... We now, I don't know, what do the Liberals do when the ABC's John Fain again this morning gloats to the Treasurer that the ABC at least had the loving support of Labor and the Greens, both their leaders, both of them promising even more money to the ABC that so helps them? Are you aware that both Bill Shorten and the Greens leader, Richard Di Natale, will be speaking at an ABC Friends rally this weekend in Melbourne? Good luck to them. Are you aware that they may well be making announcements to make the ABC and further media issues uh, a, live, um, a live point of difference in this campaign? Well, from our perspective, uh, you know, we believe the ABC plays a vital role in uh, the public uh, debate and I certainly... But you've starved it of funds. Well, that's not actually correct. You know, it's receiving more than a billion dollars of taxpayers' funds. The Liberals must give that monster more money or it'll bite its head off. Well, I repeat, the ABC is not just too biased but too big for a democracy and this cannot stand.